Hello and welcome back to JVCTR. For those of you that are new, my name is Johnny and today I want to show you how you can hardwire a dash cam in a Mark 8 Fiesta ST. Hello, yes, and welcome. So today, as you would have seen in the title, we are installing a dash cam in a Mark 8 Fiesta ST. Now I'm installing a 412GW Nextbase dash cam, which I've reviewed separately. I'll pop a link to the video up there. And in terms of this video, um, well, I'll be honest, it's not gone as smoothly as I would have thought. Um, I've had quite a number of hurdles with getting a dash cam in the Mark 8, so hopefully you guys at home can learn from those. And I guess that is testimony to why step one is just so important. We'll get onto that in a bit. Now, in terms of tools, um, you don't really need much at all. You need a 10 mil socket to undo the bolt to the firewall, which allows you to get a negative connection to the dash cam. And you also need a, well, it's nice to have some trim removal tools, uh, but if I'm honest, I didn't actually use them too much. They were good for poking wires and stuff, but that's about it. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get into it. So as part of step one, the first thing you need to do is wire it up as if it was hardwired, but without rooting the wires and removing all your plastics. The reason for doing this is to ensure that you have everything you need to make it work and that it, it does actually work. So I guess um, stage one is to get into the fuse box. Now in my Mark 7, you had to remove the gloves compartment, which was not too difficult, and you're presented with the passenger side fuse box. Now I assumed it would be the same in the Mark 8, but as this is a new model, like any self-respecting man would, I referred to the instructions. And it says, and I quote, open the glove box, turn the retaining clips and remove them, press the sides inward and swivel the glove compartment downward. Now I did this, it was quite a challenge. I had a bit of a struggle with it and I finally got the glove box to drop down as designed and I was presented with no fuse box, which, which left me kind of confused. So I then went on the hunt as to where my fuse box could be because it isn't where it should be. Um, and I actually found it was actually really easily accessible. Um, you basically just need to undo these two clips uh, in the passenger footwell, remove this piece of trim, which is just sort of hanging there really. Um, and you're presented with the fuses, which is actually a much better design than, than I thought it was. Um, but one slight note, just as I've discovered where my fuse box is, uh, if any of you actually use a disc lock, um, maybe think twice about putting it in the passenger footwell. Of course, it's a fuse box. If it gets one big knock, then that is the whole of your fuse box gone and it needs to be replaced. So if you're putting your disc lock in the footwell, then if you do a, an emergency stop, then it's going to hit your fuse box and that is your car conked. So just a suggestion, might be worth actually putting your disc lock in the boot when you're using a Mark 8. Now, as I mentioned, this is the second time that I'm attempting to make this video. And the reason being is that when you buy the next based hardwire kit, it comes with a standard blade fuse and a mini blade fuse. Now, unfortunately, the Mark 8 is modern and everything. Um, so it actually uses Micro 2 blade fuses. And I was kind of stumped as to where to go because I couldn't really find any fuse tappers that worked for a Micro 2. And I'd also bought a hardwire kit and it didn't fit. So I emailed next base and I must admit, they were absolutely superb. They sent me out a Micro 2 blade adapter and uh, away we go. So let's get it connected up and make sure it actually works. Firstly, you'll need to decide which fuse to tap into. Choose a permanent live like the anti-theft horn if you'd like your dash cam to stay on permanently or if you'd like your camera to come on and off with the ignition, choose a switch live. Today we're using fuse three, the parking control module. Next, pull your chosen fuse they can be a little stiff, so be patient and avoid using metal tools like tweezers at all costs. Grab your fuse tapper and insert the fuse you just pulled into the empty slot as shown. When the fuse has been fully inserted, install the fuse tapper into the original location of the fuse. It should be tall enough to go over the top of the other fuses. You can now connect the fuse tapper to the next base hardwire kit using the supplied bullet connector.
To ground your dashcam connection, you'll need to secure the black wire to the vehicle chassis, which is in turn connected to the negative terminal on your vehicle's battery. Although hard to see here, there is a 10mm bolt in the firewall right next to the fuse box. Simply undo this bolt a little, slide the connector behind it and tighten it back up again. Now, the moment of truth. Does it work? So it works! Hooray! Time to mount your camera. There are two choices with the 4 and 2 GW, a suction cup and a sticky mount. I'll be mounting mine with the sticky mount. Try to position your camera as high up the windscreen as possible and behind the rear view mirror to keep it out of view when you are driving. To route your cables, start by removing the trim on your A pillar. No tools required here, simply pull off the door seal and unclip the plastics. As you can see, there is an airbag behind here. It is safe to run cables down here, but ensure they do not interfere with the operation of the airbag. There is a handy hole here to poke the wire behind the airbag, but apologies for my camera work as I'm trying to hold the camera and route wires at the same time. You can now tuck the wires into the roof lining. I found a wide trim remove tool to be useful here. Pull the lower door seal off and unclip the trim along the bottom of the doorway. Hook your wires around the end of the trim. This means that you don't have to unplug the cabling and risk it not working once you've installed. Pull the cable through and tuck the cable behind the carpet. We'll sort out the excess cable in a moment. Gently clip the door trim back on and reinstall your door seal. Continue to reinstall the door seal ensuring that you push the cabling back into the car as you go. And the last trim piece to install is of course the A-pillar. Simply clip it back into place. To finish, I use the tie wraps that came with the hardware kit to hold the cable together and then tie it to an existing cable to stop it rattling around. I then put the fuse box cover back and that was the job complete. So, there you have it. That is how you install a Nextbase dash cam in a Mark 8 Fiesta ST. Um, if you found this useful, give it a like. And if you want to see more about my Fiesta ST and other technology reviews and stuff, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. I, I, I,